Outlander's Sam Hugan on the show's strongest finale yet. Hello Droughtlander, my old friend. After 12 weeks of romance, murder, and mayhem, Outlander closed out season 5 with its most harrowing, audacious episode to date. Jumping ahead to a storyline from the sixth book in its source material, the finale follows a brutal attack on Claire Fraser, Katrina Bailf. As she is kidnapped, raped, and beaten by a group of men who loathe her influence on their wives, she dissociates to a dreamscape where she finds comfort in her family, particularly the arms of her husband, Jamie, Sam Hugan. And it's him, along with their stepson, nephew, and son-in-law, who ultimately crush her captors. Hogan and Bale for first-time producers this season, and their influence is most evident in this episode, Hogan says. You can read Bale's take on the finale here, we sat together and worked through it every day, he tells L.com. I think it comes down to me and Katriana pushing in one direction and Jamie, Payne, the director, being such a great collaborator and visionary. And while Bale does the emotional heavy lifting, Hogan relished the action involved in Claire's rescue. It was cool to see him turn into Red Jamie, just ruthless, the actor says of Jamie's battle demeanor. As soon as he goes for them and needs to protect Claire, there's no thought involved anymore, it's just sheer rage. Or cold anger. The episode ends on a note of hope, with Claire vowing to not let her attack break her, though Balef promises there's a long journey of recovery ahead for the character. This is something that's going to take her own patience and the patience and love of her family to get her through this. But with Season 5 officially wrapped, no outlander for the foreseeable future is a bleak prospect in the midst of a global pandemic. Thankfully, Hogan left me with this cryptic glimmer of hope, there might be a little something to tie you guys over. But there'll be more, on, that in the future. Read on for his take on the finale and what to expect in Season 6. Let's talk about the finale. This was a tough concept to get right, but I think you pulled it off. We were unsure about it. It's very disturbing and graphic and challenging, so we wanted to get it right. Katriana should be very proud. She's done some great work there. And we have to thank the director, Jamie Payne, and Tony, Graffia, who wrote it. It was a lot of discussions, about, trying to get the tone right. We were all very aware of how graphic the trauma Jamie goes though at the end of season 1 was. We didn't want to do that. In this day and age, we can't do that anymore. But we didn't want to lighten it by making it a fantasy of escapism or too comfortable. It, had to be, off kilter and not quite right. We wanted to be sure we were honest and truthful to the narrative, but also to the situation she is in. It was a really fun process, and it was intense. We knew we had something that was going to be quite powerful. This whole season has been strong and surprising for the viewers, and I think this finale is our strongest yet. How was it pitched to you? We first read the script and it felt right, but it's hard to imagine the tone of something on a piece of paper. There were, a lot of mood boards, a lot of pictures trying to work out what it meant for Claire to go into this world, what she was doing and why she was doing it. Detail is probably the best part of it. It's fascinating to watch Claire's subconscious marry all the different realities she's experienced. We wanted to reflect that in Claire's escapism. It's not Jamie Fraser or any of the family in the future. It's the essence of who they are, their representation. I think I even suggested to Matt about the Browns being in her reality and, breaking in. For me, the biggest challenge was, what does Jamie look like in her escapism? Initially costuming wanted Jamie to be in 70s clothing, and I thought we shouldn't, because Claire knows Jamie can't be in the future. Also, I wanted to see less of Jamie. I didn't want to see him fully realized, I wanted him to be a symbol. He's not fully realized or fully formed because it's in Claire's head. It reminded me of the Spectre Frank sees in the pilot. Did that come up at all? I think there's a lot to be revealed. There's a lot about reality and time travel, how does Claire go through time? And we did relate back to season 1 a lot, Claire and Jamie, riding a horse together for the first time or seeing each other for the first time. We wanted to bring that back and the way Jamie looks, then, 